Corey, and today I am making you a Ruby tutorial. Ruby is a great language. This is the Wikipedia page if you want to read about Ruby. It's a high level language and you can really do a lot with it. And I love the language. I think it's better than Python and personally I think it is the best language out there. This is the home page for the Ruby programming language. Um, you can read about it here. But the, you're going to use this documentation at some point as a resource. If you have any questions about Ruby or anything, I would consult the rubylanguage.org backslash documentation. So the first thing you want to do to get started is download RubyMine. RubyMine is what's called a text editor, and it is for writing code, and then you can run the code. If you have Mac OS, your computer already has Ruby installed. And downloading RubyMine, it sets up the dev environment and everything for you easily. So you can get a free 30-day trial, or if you're a student, you can get it for free. Um, I love Ru There's other text editors out there, but I love RubyMine. And once you have that downloaded, you're going to go ahead and you're going to come to RubyMine. I'll put the link in the description, description, by the way, but in case I forget, it's jetbrains.com backslash Ruby. I love all their text editors. So you go to RubyMine. We're going to create a new project. It's going to be an empty project. And we're just going to name this Corey underscore practice. Now, once in here, we're going to do file, new. We're going to create a Ruby file. And we're just going to name this practice again because it's practice. And now, boom, you got a... Uh, file. Sometimes we get messages like this. I don't know what RoboCop is, but I'm just going to reinstall it. It's not going to do anything. Don't pay attention. But anyway, the first thing about programming you want to learn is comments. Comments do nothing. They are basically little notes you leave yourself. So say I got to write some code. I need to do, I do to do. It'll highlight it just to stick out and remind me. I'm going to write a Flutter tutorial, because that is actually something I need to do. Um, yeah, the, the, this doesn't get interpreted at all. It's just something for the programmer to read. Um, if you have a function, you might want to comment what the function does, but we'll get to functions later. You probably don't even know what that is. The first thing we're going to go over is data types and variable assignments. So when you have a variable in math, like x or y, you can store a bunch of different, oh geez, we'll ignore that. You can store a bunch of different numbers in x or y. So we can do x, we can do 2.0, we can do y, we can do like 3. But in programming languages, you can store more than just numbers. You can score text. Um, you can score store other data structures. So this is what's called a list. Actually, I'll just name this list. Uh, we're going to call this a hash. So we do key and value. So Hashes and list are higher level data structures. So they're for, hashes and lists are for storing a lot of stuff. So I might have a hash uh, named like person. And then I'll do name Corey age 22 and stuff like that. And we'll get into hashes later, but hashes and lists you basically want to know are higher level data structures for storing things. Now, the three basic data structures that I like to think about are strings, floats, and of course, integers. So a string, string, a string is just text. So you see how you create the string, you open the string with double quotes, and it has to close with single quotes. Now, if I leave off a quote, I'll get an error right here. I see expected string end. So I didn't end my string. 
Alternatively, you can do double quotes or single quotes, although there is a difference between each string, between double quotes and single quoted strings. So, single quote strings. <clears throat> Integer. So integers are just numbers without a decimal point. Whereas floats have a decimal point. And the way I like to remember this is that the float it has a decimal floating off the end. Pretty corny, I know, but that's just a good way to remember it. Um, so if you're new to programming, this might be a little confusing to you, but the way I like to think of data types is you'll have different types of football plays. So you'll have play action, you'll have run, you'll have Hail Mary, and all that. Same goes with computer programming. You have different types of data. data yeah, you have different types of data, and they do different things. They have different options available to them. You could also think about it alternatively as in, in, in terms of finance, you have stocks and you have bonds. They're both financial tools. I don't know anything about finance, so this is probably a terrible example. They're both different types of tools, but they're different. So you use data types for different things. So in the next episode, we're going to go over the string data type. Um, so stay tuned. Thank you for watching, and um, I'm going to put up a link in the description. Uh, it's how I learned how to code. Uh, I would read that, and it'll help you learn, because I taught myself, and I'm going to teach other people. It's just my methodology for learning faster. So I will link that, and I will link Ruby Mine in the description. Thank you for watching.